with the receiver going in the background. Over the last couple of nights I've been working away on the transmitter board and there it is there all marked up and ready to go into the etch. So this board is identical in size to the receiver board and as we've planned it's going to plug together sandwich style so transmitter on the bottom receiver on the top. This board was prepared using an identical process to the receiver board. From left to right the relay to switch the low pass filters will sit here. There will be low pass filters either side. This earthed area here is for a DC power jack, a 3.5 millimeter key socket and then in this space here there will be a 12 volt 7812 regulator. So signal from the oscillators will come in up here, it will be routed up here to, um, to this area of the board here, this will be the keying circuitry. So now we'll have a keyed carrier at 7 or 14 megahertz and that will drive a broadband, single broadband bipolar transistor amplifier stage here. There's room on the board for a pi attenuator, a pad, just to make sure that this doesn't overload the, um, the high speed gate driver. That's space for the 74AC00 quad NAND gate driver and then the three BS-170s will just sit along here. Earth area here is so that they can be pressed down against the board and glued in case they need some heat sinking. So there it is, the transmitter board. Next time we see it, it'll be nicely etched and ready for assembly. Here is the etched board now. And I've built out the bottom right hand corner which is a two transistor side tone oscillator. Turning that on there's the side tone oscillator buzzing has a frequency 430 Hertz and amazingly, it's drawing no power. Well, under a milliamp. Another building session has been put in and a bunch more components have been put onto the transmitter boards. There's a 7812 regulator here. And this area of the board is um, two high side switches with different time constants. So this is a BC558, that's the high side switch for keying the buffer. So that's got a short time constant on it. And uh, that actually didn't work. Put a recycled BC558 in there. So once I pulled that out and replaced it with a working BC558, that's, uh, that came up. That's my fault again for rummaging these components out of my junk box. This BC558 is probably three decades old or more. Heaven knows uh, where it came from. There's a BD140 here. It's under this capacitor. So it's doing the heavy lifting. So it's going to switch the DC to the PA and it's on a, because of this capacitor, it's on a much longer time constant. So when I close the key socket here, the short duration switch closes. This one keys the buffer which is down here. Um, again all, two surface mount transistors and surface mount components. So this transistor keys the buffer and that keys the oscillator and uh, this transistor will key the DC supply to the PA which will be mounted over here. Next, uh, next stage of assembly. To demonstrate this all I need to do is to short out the key contacts and I've got the oscillator 
clipped in. So on this little bit of coax here, I've got the 40 metre 7022 megahertz oscillator coming in here into the keyed buffer. Let's key it up. And so that's keying the side tone. But because we're keying a 40 metre oscillator, we can see that and hear it. And there's our signal on 7022.3. But the other thing we can do is to listen on my local receiver and actually hear the RF. Well, that's a QRPP transmitter now in its own right, isn't it? Because if I key it, I've got 1.3 volts peak to peak. 1.2 volts peak to peak is 6 dBm, or what's that, uh, 4 milliwatts. So a 4 milliwatt QRPP transmitter. Next part of the job is to build up the low pass filters. So two low pass filters, 40 meters here, 20 meters here. These are from W3NQN and uh, they are switched by this miniature Telco relay here. So pretty much the identical arrangement for switching the transmitters low pass filters as is used on the upper receiver board for switching the receiver band pass filters. In this case, I'm using these tiny little T30 toroids. The reason for this is just to save space, to keep the vertical height down. And uh, these T30s can easily handle 5 watts of power. Low-pass filters are easy to make. They're just three inductors in series and capacitance to ground on either side of each of the inductors and I'm using 50 volt surface mount capacitors here. Winding these toroids is fairly straightforward. I do it with a magnified lamp so that I'm looking through the magnifier the whole time. Just thread the turns through and then when you've got about the right number of turns on I test them on my VK3 BHR LC meter. So thanks to Phil, VK3BHR, for this great design. And uh, this one was built for me by David, VK3KR, quite a few years ago now. You just turn it on, select inductance. You short the clip leads for inductance, open them for capacitance. With the clip leads shorted, just hit that zero button. That's a calibration function. There it is. So now it knows that the short circuit is no inductance and then just clip the toroid on. And there we have 0.775 microhenry and uh, the filter calls for a 0.77. So that's close enough. And you can get a reasonable amount of inductance variation just by changing the spacing of turns on that nice little toroid. Time to sweep the low pass filters. So the filter section of the board is cabled up. Here's a sweep across the 40 meter filter. It's showing 0.49 dBm at 7020. Now a loop back test by way of calibration indicated 0.35 dB, sorry, 0.14 dB. So uh, I think the insertion loss is probably the difference at 40 meters, so probably 0.35 dB. 
insertion loss at 40 meters and it goes down to minus 46 dBm at 18 megahertz. So uh, that's a pretty acceptable 40 meter low pass filter. What's always of interest is the second harmonic, so 7, 14, second harmonic is about 40, nearly 40 dB down. Putting 12 volts onto this relay, so that closes the relay, and now the lower low pass filter is in circuit. Let's run the macro again. Now the loop back indicated 0.7 dBm, so it's got generally the right shape for a low pass filter. Not as uh, not as not as steep as the 40 meter filter, which is interesting. The minimum is showing minus 99 minus a dBm at 14060, um, but the uh, the loop back measured 0.7 of a dBm, so I reckon that's about 0.3 of a dB insertion loss there, allowing for that simple calibration. And then the filter maxes out at minus 24 dBm at 24 megahertz, so not as steep as the 40 meter filter. Not exactly sure why that might be. One possibility is that these T30 inductors aren't um, high Q enough. I can't imagine it's anything to do with the capacitors. So um, I'll leave these in for the moment. We'll build up the RF power amp and then using the spectrum analyzer we'll, we'll measure um, harmonic output from the transmitter once the whole transmitter is working. And if the um, harmonic output is too high I'll have to strengthen this filter. The obvious thing to try, I think, would be to pull these toroids out and replace them with the larger toroids, but let's see what we find. Some good progress on this transmitter board. Most of the components and stages are on it now, up to the gate driver IC and the PA transistors. In the next video, I'll add in those components we should be able to get 5 watts out on 40 metres and hopefully a reasonable amount out on 20 metres as well. I hope you're enjoying this construction series. If so, please like and subscribe so that you can follow the remaining videos. See you next time.